Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome. This is Julie with ProSoft and uh, I'm really excited to present this webinar to us. Thanks for joining. Um, this is incorporating power protection equipment into Rockwell Automation Control Logics PACs. One quick thing before I introduce Eric, uh, I want to tell you about the Q&A box that's at the bottom of your screen. If you can just post um, your questions in there, we will get to those at the very end. And um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Eric Syme. He's our product manager here at ProSoft. And go ahead and take it away, Eric. All right, thank you very much. Thanks everybody for uh, taking the time to join today's webinar. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we can have some good information for you. Um, but yeah, we were gonna talk about uh, incorporating some of your power protection equipment into uh, Rockwell Automation Control Logic Systems. So when we talk about or look at some of the power protection equipment, and a lot of times we're addressing IEDs that are used throughout um, various applications within a uh, control system. And this data from the IEDs is, is used to, uh, it's integrated into the control system. Uh, it's done for some substation automation. And a lot of times the, the information is further passed up um, into either a SCADA or utility enterprise level. And really with the rise of ethernet connection uh, between these devices, it's we've been able to achieve a lot of new efficiencies. Um, the IED vendors have been able to come up with some very advanced control schemes that they can, um, they can accomplish with the, uh, or control and protection schemes that they can accomplish with these devices and uh, the support of ethernet. So um, when we really look at where um, these applications occur, um, I, I like to always say that if you find yourself in a room like the, the picture on the top right hand side, um, that's really where you um, are, you, you can incorporate some of these uh, uh, devices into your control architecture. Um, these uh, power protection relays are, are used in anything from uh, power generation applications, pulp and paper, oil and gas, metal and mining, uh, heavy materials. And then as far as some of the, uh, uh, you look at like uh, rock automation, they do have a, a package power product offering that uh, the product that we'll be talking about today are, are a critical component of that, that uh, intelligent package power product offering. So. When we look at really these uh, devices and how we integrate these into control logic systems, um, it has traditionally been on a Modbus communication network. That was kind of the first implementation, um, then uh, kind of migrated over to like a Modbus TCP IP network. But then there's also been some very specific um, protocols that have been used in integrating these devices into a control architecture. Um, DMP and, and IEC uh, 60870 5 101, 103, and 104 were protocols that were some of the first ones that were really designed to um, uh, for, for these devices and, and came up with, Modbus was kind of like a de facto standard just because everybody supported it and it, but uh, DMP and the IEC 60870 protocols uh, came out and they, they basically addressed some of the issues with Modbus um, and um, were specific to uh, the, the power protection equipment. Um, but uh, even those, those protocols came up, with, uh, came up short on, on some areas. And so really what uh, the, the protocol that we see the rising uh, quite a bit and one that uh, is a preferred protocol used in these applications is the IEC 61850 protocol, which it's a, a newer standard, um, but it's, it's really helped to address some of the shortcomings of the other protocols and has really given us um, some, some great features and functionality that uh, as we look at bringing that into control logic systems, we've been able to take advantage of. So, so what is IEC 61850? It's, it's basically an international standard um, for substation automation. Um, it defines not only the communication between the devices, but it also describes um, and, and has a, a structured support for interoperabilities between uh, various IEDs. 
um, they, they went so far as to define a, a common configuration language. And really the, the benefit that we see with 61850 is that the fact that they were able to adopt a data model approach, um, a standardized service for, for different uh, device behavior models, um, standardized object models and naming conventions. The, and really the, the key thing that, um, that I really like about it is the self-descriptive tags. Um, and so when I look kind of at the self-descriptive tags, it's really, it, it's something like this where you've got a logical device, um, which is your, in this case, it could be your protective relay. You've got a logical node, um, something like a XCBR, and there's several of these logical nodes uh, that are defined in the protocol. Then there's uh, the data, there's, and then there's the attribute. And the, the nice thing about this data model approach is it really has become, it, it, it's, it's vendor neutral. So any device um, uh, such as a, a circuit, break, uh, circuit breaker protection device is gonna have this XCBR um, logical node uh, defined in it. And so what that means is it, it allows you to go ahead and uh, um, it, it's self-descriptive tags, but it also gives you a standardized format that even if you're, you're going to a different vendor's equipment or you're switching from one vendor to another, that same logical node is there. So you're, you're not having to, to relearn um, and, and readdress all your stuff uh, all over again. And, I really, I look at kind of this, this data model approach is, and the self-descriptive tags is really, if you think back to um, RS Logics 5 and, and 500 for PLC 5s and Slick 500s, and then out came Control Logics and, and uh, Studio 5000 or at the time RS Logics 5000. You now, instead of having N7 tags and N10 tags and F8, um, you were and, and hoping that somebody put comments um, in their uh, in their PLC code. You really now have the ability to have these self-descriptive tags that mean something when you look at it. And um, what that does by having these self-descriptive tags, it really gives you the benefit of uh, you can get a savings of up to 75% in your configuration time. Um, you get some some major reductions in your just the efforts and configuration efforts and really that we're getting a lot closer to uh, this plug and play um, it's it, it it helps to really be able to get these devices um, online uh, troubleshoot and commissioned much quicker and these self descriptive tags um, is, is is a starting uh, point for that as well as the uh, configuration language. And then as you're passing this information up to different layers throughout your, your um, automation scheme up from the controller up to this data layer, um, you don't lose any of this, this information. So it uh, becomes very helpful right there. So, so one of our products that have, we've had for years that's uh, been able to incorporate and take advantage of some of these uh, 61850 um, uh, features is our PLX82 EIP uh, 61850 gateway. And so what this, it's a standalone gateway module and it allows, um, goes out, communicates with uh, these protective relays out on the network brings that information back in and goes ahead and allows you to uh, pass that information over to uh, control logics. Uh, this is a product that I believe we released it in 2014. So uh, we've had it out for about seven years now, uh, thousands of successful installations worldwide. And um, customers have been able to achieve and, and see some, some significant benefits off of this. One such example was a, a powerhouse that we did that uh, we actually had, uh, we incorporated around 54 of these uh, protective relays um, into a control logic system. And we had a, a total of 12 individual gateways out there. Um, we took advantage of some, some wireless communication using our, our radio links products. And then we also had some of our, uh, our MBI 56 modules that fit directly in the control logics chassis in addition to the gateway. 
and how our customer was able to uh, take advantage of this and, and see the, the benefit was if you look at the, the old way that they were doing it, um, they had these protective relays and uh, out in their, their, their plant and they had a, uh, a standalone RTU unit that they had to basically these relays were communicating 61850. They had to program the standalone RTU unit to go ahead and, and grab information from 61850 and then put that into a Modbus TCP IP network. And then they would use one of our in chassis uh, Modbus TCP IP cards, our MBI 5060 Mnet C module to go ahead and get the, all this information. And, and this worked, I mean, it worked very well, very reliably. Um, it, uh, it had quite a bit of setup and configuration that was associated with it. Not only were you programming uh, in, in control logic, but you're also programming in this, the standalone RTU device. You also had an Excel spreadsheet that uh, you had to keep track of to, to basically say, okay, well, uh, this point on my 61850 network is now this point on my Modbus TCP IP network. And anytime somebody went and made a change, um, you had to hope that they actually updated the Excel spreadsheet and put the, the latest and greatest information in there. So, um, so while this worked and, and worked very well and reliably, and um, it, it was a lot of setup and configuration. They, they said that it typically took them about a week to program, configure, and um, commission something like uh, a setup like this. So, so when they went ahead and, and tried out our gateway communication module, they were uh, very surprised on, on just the, the tight integration that they were able, able to achieve with the same network. So by eliminating that standalone RTU device and utilizing one of our gateway modules, they were able to essentially take that, that data model um, that was on the IEC 62850 network and bring that all the way up into the, the Rockwell uh, Control Logics network. And so with our, our standalone gateway, we have this um, configuration software, which basically allows you to map data and then it builds uh, custom add-on instructions that can be used in in uh, RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000 to um, um, basically give you that exact same tag name all the way up through. And then furthermore, you can bring that all the way up into uh, something like Factory Talk U. And so there's no keeping track of an Excel spreadsheet or anything like that. Um, and really the, the benefit for this customer was they were able to uh, reduce that that seven or the, the week long configuration, um, configuration setup, commissioning time, they were able to reduce that down to a couple hours, um, in many cases as short as like three hours. And so uh, they really were able to get these systems up online uh, much quicker and much more efficiently. So, so that was, uh, that's been our, our gateway solution that like I mentioned, we've, we've uh, had this around since 2014 that helps solve and integrate these IEC 61850 solutions. So, but even at that, uh, that was released about seven years ago. And so we've had over the, the last seven years, we've had some requests for uh, um, enhanced functionality. And uh, so that's where we've uh, developed a newer solution. Um, that will be coming soon. Uh, third quarter of this year is our anticipated release, um, but it's a IEC 61850 uh, client module that fits directly into the control logics, uh, control logics backplane. And um, this allows some similar functionality to what our gateway module has, but it really builds upon some of those customer applications that uh, we may not have been able to solve as well with the uh, gateway module um, and gives us a, a very integrated in chassis uh, solution. So um, again, this, this, this solution provides um, multi-vendor capability. So your uh, the 61850 protocol, like I mentioned, is 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 um, can be amongst multiple vendors such as SEL, ABB, GE, 
even Alan Bradley has some uh, some of their 857 relays that uh, support the 6 to 1 850 uh, protocol. Um, this module also kind of uh, takes advantage of some some additional functionality that uh, we've wanted to do for a long time. Um, and uh, so really one of the key things that we've been able to do with this module is uh, we now can support up to 40 IEDs with a, a single module. Um, as we looked at our gateway module that only had the capability to support 20, uh, we've been able to double that with this new module. Um, additionally, we've with our gateway module, we've been able to support MMS and Goose uh, subscriber for years, but this is our first product that allows us to be able to support Goose Publisher. And what that does is this really opens up the ability to, um, for some of the more advanced and time critical protection schemes, we can now take advantage of Goose Publisher um, from the, the control logic side, publish Goose messages to the IEDs on the network. And what this can effectively do is uh, eliminate some of the, the need to hardwire IO um, uh, back to these relays um, or to the control system. And this is a, a achievable only through the, the, the fact that we can support some very fast IO connections um, and a lot of them. Um, the module itself can support IO connections all the way down to four milliseconds. And it can support up to 225 IO connections on the control logic side. Now, not all of those are at four milliseconds. That's, uh, uh, that's highly unrealistic right there, but we do, we can support up to uh, 50 IO connections at the four millisecond time timeline. And then a lot of your MMS data and uh, some of the lower priority data um, can run at uh, higher RPI times within the uh, control logics processor. But this module is one of the most um, uh, powerful modules within the, the control logics backplane and really provides a, a ton of communication data. Just to put it in, in reference, our old gateway module supported 20 IO connections. So this module supports 10 times the amount of uh, data that we had previously. So. We still went ahead and took advantage of um, our tight integration within um, Studio 5000, but we kind of built upon that with this new module. Um, we've got a custom add-on profile that uh, can be installed in Studio 5000. It does require Studio 5000 version 32 or greater, um, and uh, but that that that. Uh, Studio 5000 can launch our configuration software from directly inside a, this custom add-on profile. Um, the configuration software then goes ahead and builds, um, uh, not only does it build an add-on instruction that can be used um, to map the data over the controller tags, but also for some of your high priority data, it, it will go and build the uh, actual uh, controller tag um, in the uh, connection. So if you see at the, the bottom there, you got the local one colon I, um, meaning that the module's in slot number one, and then the first input connection, but it, it's actually building out that, that tag uh, directly in, in uh, control logic. So uh, that information, the, the nice part about this being all integrated within an add-on profile is it's stored directly in the processor. So if you've got in the event of a, a device failure um, and say, for instance, you have to plug in a, put a new module in its place, um, it is simple as, as easy as just going ahead and automatic device recovery, you plug a new module in, it gets the configuration from the processor and you're back up and running. So. Um, again, like I mentioned, the 225 IO connections is something that uh, we're very happy that we were able to uh, achieve that and those, uh, the ability to define some of those as high priority connections is a great enhancement for this uh, solution and, and some of the applications that we're able to solve. So as we look uh, at just 
the comparing our old module with the or the old gateway module with this new and chassis module um, some of the, the key things that I've touched on I already talked about the IEDs supported um, the IO connections 225 IO connections and really um, if you look at this it's uh, we're twice as many IEDs with 10 times as much IO data and uh, really the the reason for that was on our gateway module as we started looking at some of the applications customers were performing it really the limitation was not the number of ieds on a lot of instances it was the total number of io connections so by uh, doubling the amount of ieds that we can support and going up to 10 times on the number of io connections um, we feel that we can truly build out networks um, of 40 IEDs um, and with uh, some some room to left over on those 225 IO connections. We've also been able to add the ability of the PRP or parallel redundancy protocol as a lot of the, the protective relays um, on the market have uh, come to support that that protocol. It was uh, a limitation that we did not support on our, our previous solution and um, uh, we are allowed to uh, we do support it on the this new module like i mentioned on the goose publisher goose publisher really allows us to push data from control logics um, over to directly to the the protective relays and uh, previously on our gateway gateway module we were only doing that um, with hardwired io we also have the ability to support IEEE 1588 uh, with the power profile. Um, and so that allows us to uh, synchronize those uh, protective relays. And a lot of times we're, uh, and since we also support the SIP sync uh, time synchronization, it's basically you're allowed to, it's now very transparent passing from a, a SIP sync uh, time synchronization over to uh, 1588 with power profile support. So the, the same clock that's being used to synchronize your control logics network is now now can be used to synchronize your uh, your control uh, your protective relay uh, equipment. And then lastly, uh, we're we're in the process right now of doing uh, G DMV GL, which uh, used to be referred to as Kima uh, certification. So uh, um, back in 2014, when we released the, the PLX82 module. Um, they really didn't have a, a certified test procedure for uh, clients. Uh, it was more more for server-based modules. But since then, the protocols um, adopted, and um, and so we are currently going through the uh, the certification process there. So, um, so yeah, the as I mentioned, the the PRP provides that high availability Ethernet network. Um, so now, with uh, I mean, a lot of you take advantage of. Uh, DLR on your um, on your Ethernet IP networks uh, to provide that redundancy and that high availability um, PRP is what's used on a lot of the power protective relays. So uh, we can now support that along with the Goose Publisher, um, which provides that that fast um, ability to uh, do um, push data out to the protective relays on the network. And then the 1588 time synchronization um, and SIP sync will allow us to really that allows you to eliminate a separate time source. Uh, a lot of times we saw you would have a your your time synchronization source on the the control logic side, um, and then you'd have to have a, a separate time synchronization source on the the protective relay side. This allows you to uh, essentially pass that um, that clock all the way over to your protective relay network, uh, thus eliminating some, some additional hardware. So, and then lastly, um, the, this is gonna, is integrated uh, both the, the gateway module, uh, the PLX82 and this new uh, MBI 56E62850 module um, are both integrated within the uh, plant PAX um, library so Rockwell Automation has uh, gone through and, and as part of their uh, plant PAX um, library, they've created um, power protective equipment for various devices from SEL, ABB, and GE Multilin. And so these are predefined 
add-on instructions uh, that can go into the controller along with uh, face plates that um, uh, customers can take advantage of for some of these visualization things. Um, you can utilize that on uh, um, panel views or uh, factory talk view, get that information um, uh, displayed. And, and so you're, you're taking advantage of uh, um, some of the work that they've done to uh, um, get the, the visualization aspects up in there. So, And so that is uh, just a, information on 62850 and uh, a sneak peek at our, our new um, in chassis module that uh, will be coming out in Q3 this year. I do believe we've got uh, some questions right here. Um, and uh, so the one of the, the first questions that came through was, uh, uh, was I going to cover the, the setup basics on some of the uh, CID files and how they're used. Um, unfortunately, on a, a very short webinar like this, um, I, I didn't have a, enough time to go dig, uh, digging deep into um, uh, how the configuration of uh, 61850 networks is done. And uh, But we can uh, definitely look to schedule some more advanced uh, configure, configuration and setup um, questions later on. Um, Another question that came through is, uh, are you able to send control signal from the PLC to the relay using Goose or MMS? So with, um, we are now able to send Goose control messages uh, from the PLC to the relays with the 61850, the, the upcoming uh, MBI 56E 61850C module. Um, that's what's referred to as the Goose Publisher. Um, on the uh, PLX82, the gateway module, we've always been able to send control messages uh, via MMS, and we will support that on the new in chassis module as well. So, uh, so we will be able to support both of those on the new module, and then only MMS control on the gateway module. So, so we can support both of those. Um, uh, there was another question that came up on the gateway module. It looks like you have a uh, EIP and 61850 port on the module. And so, yeah, I'll just go back to this slide right here. And that is absolutely correct. There's a, a dedicated port um, on this PLX82 module um, that there's two ports on this module. It does not support the PRP network. Um, one port can be set up for a dedicated 61850 uh, communication. The other port can be set up for uh, both Ethernet IP and 61850 on the same port, um, or uh, it can do Ethernet IP only. So uh, this module has some flexibility. When we first released, we used to have a PLX81 version of this module that only had a single port on there. And as we that product went end of life, we had to um, we basically chose instead of coming out with a dedicated PLX81, we combined um, both a single NIC uh, support and dual NIC support in the same gateway module. So um, there was a question about backplane comms to, I believe that means, um, yeah, the, the, the IO, so on the gateway module, the IO connection is directly um, through Ethernet IP class one IO. Um, so, and then on the backplane side, it's uh, in the control logics module is very similar. So uh, another question came through, have you tested what is the average estimated time required to send data from the IED to control logics back to the IED by using this gateway? So we, we did do some performance testing with the gateway module. Um, and really it was uh, dependent, on, uh, dependent on a couple of factors. It's really uh, was the number of IO connections and the number of devices on the network. Um, what we saw is in general, uh, if you had a fully loaded um, module and network, uh, your your IO updates needed to be somewhere around uh, 250 milliseconds um, to get data back and forth. 
as part of the um, our release on the control logics module, uh, we've done some extensive testing and documentation of those uh, uh, networks and configuration. And it is much quicker, especially being as the, the fact that we've got some high priority connections. So um, as, as we look on our uh, release of the upcoming control logics module, we'll have even more information to provide you for, um, for that. Um, uh, and the performance that you can expect. But uh, really, four millisecond IO connections is what allows us to uh, say that you can get um, four to eight millisecond uh, goose publisher messages um, out to the device. So, um, the, another question came through local mounting with CPU and remote mounting and IO rack supported. It is supported. Um, there's uh, the recommendation to use in uh, four TRs um, because it supports a double data rate on the, the back plane. Um, and so uh, the, we'll have some documentation on uh, some architectures for both local and remote mounting, um, as well as uh, some considerations with the, uh, on the control logic side. Um, and then, so the next question, so without Goose Publisher, you cannot send control command to the relay. Um, that is, yeah, the, without Goose Publisher, you can send MMS control messages to the relay. Um, they're just not some of the MMS control messages are much slower than the Goose Publisher messages. And so if you're designing some um, load shedding applications and stuff like that. MMS control messages may not be fast enough for that, but Goose Publisher certainly is. So um, do the two RJ45 uh, jacks on the new module allow for building a ring network, not just parallel uh, redundant to the downstream IEDs? Uh, that is, it, it, the PRP is the redundancy that most of the protective relays um, uh, support uh, with 61A50. I mean, they they recommend um, having managed switches uh, on the network just to to help control some of the traffic. So we didn't just uh, implement the the two port uh, ring uh, on that on on the, the the module itself. It is a true PRP. So it's either going to be on PRP mode or simplex mode. So, um, gosh, good questions. Um, whether it will support both end-to-end -end transparent mode and boundary mode of PTP. Um, that is a, a question that I will need to get uh, back to um, on boundary mode or transparent mode. Um, I apologize. I don't know that off the that answer off the top of my head. Um, are there any plans to introduce a standalone version of the new uh, standalone version of the new chassis module? At this time, um, at this time, no. Um, we're uh, working on just uh, releasing this control logics module, um, but th there is a potential that we will eventually um, update the standalone module um, uh, in conjunction with some other projects that we're working on. I, don't have any time frame on that. Um, who's the best contact for more information on the new module? Um, any one of our, uh, um, our, our sales people can uh, go ahead and provide you some additional information or uh, I can reach out to you regarding that um, and send you out some more information. As uh, I mentioned, we're still in the process of rele releasing this module. Um, if IED device not support PRDP, only have one NIC, can use, yes. Uh, it, it, the question is, if you only have one NIC on the IED, can you still um, use the new module? And the module has the, the option for simplex mode or PRP mode. And so, yes, you can absolutely still use this module with devices that don't support it. Um, We've had some issues with the gateway module where it did not like when devices disappeared from the network. This caused the driver to fail and try to recover and the data from the IEDs was stale. Can you speak to improvement for the in-chassis module? So really, yeah, the, um, 
we have done some enhancements to some of the error handling on the new in chassis module. Um, part of that was uh, uh, as we provided new support for the Goose publisher. Um, and then also as part of uh, the Kima testing, um, we've had to do some additional enhancements to uh, as networks um, went offline. So yes, the we do have uh, enhancements to this module, new module to be able to handle better when devices go offline. And last two questions. Thanks for hanging in there, everybody. Um, is there any way to put the new modules in redundant PLC racks? Yes, the new modules will reside in a redundant uh, architecture. But as you know, uh, Rockwell only supports um, this module still looks like an I.O. module, uh, 225 I.O. connections, and so it must go in the remote rack. Um, the only thing that can go in the, the PLC racks is the, uh, the, the processor and, um, and all that stuff. So uh, it does require L8 processors, um, which I believe the redundancy version of that is I think it's either already released or coming out shortly. Um, and so, yeah, we'll have some uh, different architectures for how to handle that in redundancy. Uh, the other thing is we we like having the EN4Ts there, and that's not currently available in the, the uh, current version of redundancy. So um, will the mo next question is, will the module support redundancy? Yes. Uh, or I'm sorry, it will, at, at first release, we do not have redundancy built into the 61850 network, um, but we do have, uh, uh, we will be looking at adding redundancy uh, on the 61850 network. Uh, as, as of right now, it just supports the, the parallel redundancy protocol. And a uh, couple more questions came in. Uh, currently, the MBI 94 MCM Modbus is replaced by a PLX 31 EIP MBS 4. Any module in MBI series is coming to fit in Control Logics rack uh, for 61850. Uh, yeah, the for 61850, the Control Logics modules that new MBI 56E 61850C module, um, and then. Uh, there was a question about will the improvements be rolled over to the existing modules? It will not be rolled over to the existing modules, the PLX 82s. Unfortunately, that hardware just doesn't support things like PRP and uh, time synchronization. Um, but as we are releasing newer, um, more uh, powerful gateway modules, uh, which is something on our roadmap, uh, we will look to, to see if we can add additional uh, or add 61850 support with some of these new features over in that platform. Um, more to come on that uh, probably sometime next year. So, And then does the new module require L8 processor? It does require an L8 processor. That is correct. Um, the the, the MVI 56E, 61850C, uh, because of the, the large number of I.O. connections and the, the fast communication over the backplane, it really needed to be able to have an L8 processor to be able to take advantage of uh, uh, the double data rate over the backplane. So. Amazing. Ah, <laughs> great job. questions, everybody. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry we ran over by about 10 minutes, but I appreciate everybody hanging, hanging with us. Um, if there are any questions about any of the 61850 solutions or um, any additional uh, uh, information that you guys need, please feel free to reach out to either your salesperson or, or myself and be more than happy to uh, get that information to you. Yep, very good. And this will be recorded and sent to you as well. So you'll, um, you'll get that in your email. All right, thanks again, Eric. Very good job. And thank you so much everybody for joining and hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks everybody.